Hey guys, welcome to the Samurai Carpenter. We're back. I'm going to show you what my new project is. We got this gorgeous little arched bridge. But the only problem is the railing's kind of falling off. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be replacing the railings. Maybe the whole bridge. I don't know. We'll have to see how rotten it is underneath there. But yeah, you can get a good view. Of nice little arch. But yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm going to teach you guys how to uh, laminate up some curved beams for the top and the bottom handrails and maybe the whole thing. And so yeah, I'm going to go into the shop and make up a jig to uh, clamp up these beams. we are this is my gorgeous pile of wood that I'm going to be building new bridge railings out of you know and you might be looking at this beautiful pile of wood and you might you know if you don't do this for a living you might be experiencing some like warm feelings in your in your loins let's say and I just want you to know that's it's not uncommon now, there's nothing wrong with you. What's happening is you're just experiencing your manhood being reawakened. Kind of in anticipation of the awesomeness that's about to take place with this wood. So don't be alarmed. Just sit tight. As you consistently engage your manhood, those feelings will go away. But uh, for now, just embrace it because it's a good thing. quarter inch plywood here, screwed some solid blocks on, three inch screws from underneath, along my radius which I just traced from the old handrail here, that's delaminating, trace the underside of the curve. If you don't have something to template your curve off of, just use a quarter inch strip of really clear straight grade wood, no knots, tack a nail at the desired radius of your arch, put a couple nails at each end, bend your strip of wood around there, put a nail on either side of the strip so it doesn't spring back and it'll sit in a perfect arch give or take you know a couple millimeters or 16 or you can trace it out perfectly doing geometry and all that fancy math stuff but I just try and stay away from that because you know I'm a freestyle samurai that's what I do so what I'm going to do now is put this plastic on here so that when I glue up all my layers, there's obviously going to be squeezed out of the glue, but I don't want it to stick to my form because that would suck. Another thing to note is all the wood that I've used is flat sawn wood. Vertical sawn wood is stronger when the grain is vertical, so it's less, it's going to be a little bit harder to bend. It'll still bend, but ultimately, the reason why I chose flat sawn is because along the edge, especially with cedar, you have nice straight grain lines so that when you bend it all together no one will even be able to tell that it's not one solid beam that it's actually glued laminations as long as I get my joints nice and tight with lots of clamps when I plane this thing up it's going to look like a clear solid curved beam and won't look like a bunch of layers glued up Alright, step two. I'm going to measure off of the top railing an even increment, which in this case is 26 and 3 quarter inches. And then we measure at every block. And then we have a parallel curve transferred down. And as it transfers down, the radius gets tighter, right? So it's not the same curve as that. So I couldn't just glue my bottom rail in that mold or else. They would look whacked out when I put them in together. The radius has to get tighter as you get closer to the center of the circle, right? And so what I've done is I ripped my quarter inch strip, like I had mentioned before, 
It's got screws set on my marks, and then I just bend my quarter inch strip so I got a nice even curve. And then I trace this out. Then I screw my blocks onto here. Two plies, I got an inch and the bottom rail is only an inch and a half thick, so I'm just going to do two plies of three quarter. Glue those up. And then this side of the railing will be done. And the rest I can just cut out with the bandsaw. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. She's all squared up, it's the way I like it. Uh, my little theory about getting f flats on wood so that all the edge grain looks like it's the same piece of wood and when it's laminated it looks like a real beam and not a laminated beam. Yeah, that part of, that I did in the other clip, yeah, that's bull. Did not work out at all, why? Because this is western red cedar and every piece of wood is a different color or a combination of multiple colors and it just doesn't go together without looking like a rainbow. So that little theory I had uh, came from, well, probably something I read, but I tried it out with this piece of Doug fir, and you can see this is all laminated strips, and it actually looks like one piece of wood at first glance, because Douglas fir is a lot more uniform in color than red cedar. So, if you're gluing up beams out of Douglas fir, this theory will work great. If you're using red cedar, don't bother, just Use whatever wood you got. Anyways, that's how it's done, guys. Curved handrails, curved beams, whatever you want to curve. Just uh, screw some blocks on a piece of wood, put some glue on it, clamp it up, you're done. You know, this is my first time. And uh, generally, I'm awesome at everything I do the first time. But, you know, I'm confident that you could easily do this too because it's really not that hard. So don't be intimidated by woodworking it's really not that hard if you're passionate about it you want to learn how to do it you're gonna do it and you're gonna do it awesome all right enough said i'm going home Summer out. oh yeah and uh bonus tip just before i go i put this on here that's all the original template to see if i had sprung back a little bit which i thought i had and i did it sprung back maybe about a quarter of an inch you know so Samurai let you down there. Forgiveness, please. Um, so yeah, my mistake is your gain. When you do your mold, just add an extra eighth or three sixteenths on the end of your curve to account for the spring back because it's gonna happen even if you're doing glue lamb beams. Anyways, next time.